For some, it was Bleach, you know? Others, maybe One Piece or Full Metal Alchemist. But for me, it was Naruto, alright? Naruto was the manga that threw me into the world of anime. Now, now obviously, it should be noted that I'd already watched Dragon Ball Z, but DBZ is it, pretty much the vanilla ice cream of anime. If you'd never seen uh, DBZ by the time you were 10 years old, the government would probably send police to your house and then have your parents hung for war crime. Even then, DB just felt like a regular cartoon to me as a kid, because you know, w when you're 8 or 10, you can't really tell the difference between anime and regular cartoons. But once one of my greatest friends, Gabe, I'll never forget it, right? He handed me that Shonen Jump Bible in math class. And once I got to the Naruto section, my eyes were open like, like never before. Everything about it was so new and fresh. Just seeing Naruto hated by his peers and the people of his village, just seeing him try his hardest every day to become one of the greatest ninjas, it was so inspiring to me. It didn't matter who didn't believe in him, he'd rise to the occasion, kick their ass, and then say a stupid ass catchphrase, believe it. So believe it! Then believe it! Believe it! And, and as cringe as that was, my middle school ass ate that shit up like it was the best thing in the world. I loved it so much, I started saying it myself. And I, after I beat people in races at the gym, I'd be like, believe it. Anytime, anytime I beat someone in a video game, believe it. It could be something as simple as just washing the dishes. You know, my, my, my wee bats would still be like, believe it, believe it. <laughs> it. It was crazy. It even got to the point where I started to Naruto run. You know, that, that, uh, what was it, that, that, Nani Mo, you know, down the hallways because I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Starting out, I thought just the first three volumes of the manga were god tier. I was like, damn, there's no way the story can get any better than this. Masashi Kishimoto's career, it's over. It's over once these Zabuza and Haku niggas get hit with the open scoop. But then, this ching ching bling bling boy says, oh, on God? Proves everyone wrong by putting out the tuning exams arc. Possibly the greatest character and world building arc in anime of all time. The arc was a display of different regions or villages characters and it gave you like an understanding of what ninjas from that area specialized in and, and what types of fighting styles beat which. They also went further into like the types of chakra and chakra usages such as uh, genjutsu which was like illusions, taijutsu which was like uh, you know kind of like specialized martial arts and then ninjutsu, which was kind of like, you know, that anime shoujin energy blast, you know, like the Rasengan and Chidori. My favorite guy during the whole thing was Neji. Even though he was possibly the biggest dick of all time, I just thought his fighting style was so slick. Nigga would walk up to you, poke you in your chest cavities, and then you couldn't use chakra anymore. You know, the only thing I hated was that he had this philosophy that he weighed predetermined destiny too much, which was mostly due to him being bitter about being the cadet branch of the family, which meant like his duty was to serve and die for the main branch of the family if need be, which was kind of the fate for his father. I was like, oh, you know, don't worry. Naruto's about to set you straight. Who will show you that hard work conquers destiny. Doesn't matter what you're born into or granted at birth, hard work is what controls your fate. Show him Naruto. And Naruto did show him. But he did it in the worst way possible. Neji's whole ideology was that predetermined destiny rules overall. You know, stuff like your birthright, your genes, the things that you're granted at birth, way more than just working hard. So after Neji presses Naruto's chakra points and makes it so that Naruto can't use chakra anymore, Naruto still beats him anyways by using his nine tails fox chakra. You know, you know, the nine tail fox, the thing that was sealed inside of him at birth. Not something that he worked for, and, and I really didn't notice that till like a week later while I'm just eating Cheerios before school, and I'm just like, what the fuck? But my issues with Naruto, it didn't stop there, alright? Being the newbie anime lover I was, I thought all arcs would be like the chewing exams where you get to see all types of ninjas excelling in different areas of the anime. Everyone's expertise will be uh, be tested through and through, which, which did somewhat happen, especially during the Great Ninja Wars, but I kid you not. Shortly after the tuning exams, this man Kishimoto was riding the Uchiha clan's dick, just chewing the foreskin off of him like minty bubblegum. For those that don't know, the, the Uchiha clan w was the clan that the secondary main character, Sasuke, belonged to. And, you know, w one of the strongest clans in existence. They had a strong ocular jutsu called the Sharingan that lets you do all types of fun stuff like, you know, c copying jutsu, setting people on fire, you name it. And Kishimoto would never let us hear the end of it. It was always Sharingan this, Sharingan that, Sharingan this, Sharingan that. Oh, that guy Nagato that didn't have the Sharingan? He had that other cool ocular jutsu called the Renegon? Well, guess what? It was given to him by a nigga with a Sharingan. Like, will you shut up about the Sharingan for two seconds? And this brings us back to what Naruto's whole ideology was. Hard work 
weighs more than destiny and birthright. Hard work determines your fate, but, but it seems like the show Naruto kind of forgot about it. And I still thought it was redeemable. I thought that the the way Naruto would redeem his ideology was by somehow losing the, the nine-tailed fox and then showing everyone that it, it was his hard work all along that was getting him through his victories. I mean, and he wasn't just sucking on the nine-tailed fox's titty anytime he was getting his ass kicked. Until Kishimoto said, I just flipped the switch. And now Naruto, the guy who's all about hard work determining your fate, is now the child of prophecy. Yes, he is the child of of prophecy his destiny before he was even born was prophesized by i forget whatever the hell this dude's name was yo, yo gabba gabba or something like that it was prophesized that he would unite the tail beast and then change the world are you kidding me and i was like you know what fine fine naruto's a lying ass bitch and kishimoto an even bigger lying ass bitch but there's no way <laughs> there's no way it could possibly get worse there's no way it can get worse and then neji the guy whose former philosophy was correct about the ninja world. You know how he said his destiny and duty was to serve and die for the main branch? And Naruto's like, nah, bruh, j -j just shape your destiny through hard work. That nigga dies! And how does he die? Go ahead, ask me, ask me, ask me, ask me how he dies, bro. Make my day, ask me. How does he die? By protecting Hanada, the main branch!